Ciao a tutti. This is Esther. This is Alfred. We're on a secret assignment someplace <laughs> in the province of Agrigento. I don't even know where. We're in San Leone, a little suburb ah, of okay. Agrigento by the sea. We're filming Porto Empodecle. What a great, great port town. Beautiful tower, churches. The main road is great. It's the ancestral hometown of Tony Patti and many, many others. We're going to be uh, subjecting that to a separate study down the road. So we figured we'd take our little travel around here and show you some really fun stuff today. For example, what do we have for fun stuff? Well, first of all, inside the hotel we're staying at is a very unique museum housing some Roman, Greek, and Byzantine pieces that the brothers that own this hotel collected from all over the world. They were originally from Sicily. Wait till you hear this story. That's great. Anything else we're going to be talking yeah, about? Yeah, of course. We're going to take you to a restaurant with us, do a little shopping, and so much more. But first, we want to tell you guys that the update here in Sicily regarding Ukraine, the president of the region, Nello Muzumeci, announced that he will be coordinating with all the nine provinces to prepare to receive refugees. And in fact, some refugees have already arrived all over the place. Also really important, the universities say that they will accept Ukrainian students so they can finish their studies here. You know, Wes, so let me just say this. Uh, Sicily is safe, barring some type of unforeseen catastrophe. Sicily is a very safe place. That said, the second thing I wanted to say is the Sicilian project has also leaped to uh, action and we started a go fund we started a uh, Facebook um, fundraiser fundraiser and yesterday was our first day. We're going to try to raise 5,000 euro uh, and we're going to we're doing it in conjunction with two uh, uh, charities that we vetted out pretty well. The money will pass through to Sicilian, excuse me, hung, uh, Ukrainian refugees. That's where the money is going to go to. Institutions here in Sicily that are helping the Ukrainians, and we identified two very important organizations that are doing this. And down the road, we will look for others as well. I want to thank I want to thank Professor Rosario Ferrace who helped us identify these great organizations. And I think Esther will put in uh, the, the notes. The show description. The show description. If you want to check, send a check or on Facebook, we have that fundraiser yes. going on. And remember, any any money you do give us is going is completely transparent, goes right to them. And uh, it's a five, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so it's tax deductible. Step up to the plate, Sicilian Americans. We really need you. Same thing with you Australians. And same thing with you UK folk. Canada, and same thing all with you Canada place. folk. Everybody now, we have to kind of join together. You know, it's been remarkable to watch even Russians living here in Sicily stepping up to the plate and backing Ukraine. Our hearts are obviously with all the people, the refugees, and everyone who's been affected. Well, so we have any to help stamp out oppression. you guys can help out is very, very much appreciated. Okay. Okay, we're going to show you a little bit of Porto Empodecle because we're going to have an entire episode later on. Porto Empodecle is a seaside community in the province of Agrigento. Empodecle, by the way, was a philosopher pre-Socrates, and he solidified the whole notion that the basis of life is water, wind, earth, and fire. So it's very, very cool. I got a chance to have a private tour inside of the Watchtower. Uh, Carlos V also went to Via Roma and several other little places. Also saw the little fishermen coming up to the pier and selling fish to people. So very, very cool. Take a little bit of a peek here. <laughs> Giuseppe's going to take us in and look at this old key. Mm -hmm. We're on top of the tower of Carlos V and look at this view. Look at the sea, wow. This is Frederick II.
his remains that were found here. Even some coins, bronze coins. Here it is, Via La Porta, where Tony Patty was born. What a beautiful little area. There's number 26 and number 24, but no, let's go ask. We can find number 25. Fire and water, is that correct? Mm -hmm. the I was basis thinking about of that life. song by their <laughs> cousins, 48,000 times removed. Earth, wind, and fire, what goes up must, must come <laughs> down. That's what I was thinking about <laughs> all, all day. Right, it was stuck right. in my head. <laughs> anyway, a very cool little town. Next, we're going to go to a restaurant we ate at uh, and take a look. What are you having for appetizers now? All right, so first of all, one of my favorite things in Sicily is the caponata. I even did an entire episode with my friend Vanessa on how to make caponata, and since then, I've been obsessed with trying caponata everywhere. So... Let's see. Of course, everyone has a different uh, recipe. It looks like this one has a little bit of carrots with besides the eggplant. Let's see. The presentation looks good. I don't mind telling you that. Mm. This is a very simple caponata. What's in there, buddy? Like it only has carrots and eggplant, and that's it. Usually, they put pine nuts, raisins, even some olives. But it doesn't look like this one has any. Oh, no, I did find a pine nut. You no. know, I think no. No, 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 no pine nuts. Solo, uh, solo melanzane, melanzane, olive, patate, patate. Ah. Oh, this has potato. Yeah. You know, Esther, sometimes I think that simpler is better. But this is potato. That's something my mom would make. Of course, she can't make anything now because she passed away 10 years ago. But and this she wouldn't make that. Lemon from his farm, so that's very the Lemons came for his farm. But this doesn't have, I have to be honest with you, as much of a, that agrodolce taste that I love, that sweet and savory. Oh, I've been waiting for this. My coxie. Now this is what I'm talking about. I know a lot of you are salivating over this. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alfred is obsessed with this, his fish. I just love those fish. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Ooh, Scala de Turkey up there. We're gonna go there as well. So what is this, shrimp? Oh, Alfred, you're gonna be in heaven. Look at this. Calamaro gamberetto e pan pizza focaccia. Pizza focaccia, that's meno fastidio. Grazie. Vado qua al centro? E qua. Sì, è okay. sì, sì. qua, qua. Grazie. Questo Fo porto via? Sì, grazie, focaccia. A voi, buon appetito ancora. Oh, This reminds me of uh, Helen's clam bar up the beach. But here we have shrimp. And what's the other one thing that's in here? Shrimp and calamari. Calamari. Fittata. So today, this is what I'm having here. Oh, you're going to have a little bit more of mine, right? All right, so we got ricotta, tomatoes, and a little bit of pesto de pistacchio on this one. Al, go ahead. All right, we're going to try it. We'll give it a, a taste evaluation. Ricotta is good? All right, try the pesto Very one. Different. The stuff out in the, this neck of the woods is a lot different than the stuff. Very different. Catania. But it's try the tomato it's one. Good. All right. This is just a tomato. These are green tomatoes too, right? No, the red tomatoes with pistachio pesto ah, on it. Red with pistachio. <laughs> Oh no. All right, honey, what do you think? I'm having a flashback. To what? Howard Johnson's. Remember <laughs> Howard Johnson's used to have the, the fried clams with no bellies? 
But wait, don't you want a little bit of sauce? Or you like a little bit of lemon? Mmm. At this uh, fish joint named Dr. Fish. <laughs> Dr. Fish. Is that what it's called? Dr. Fish. Yeah, Dr. Fish. And uh, I, I, end I ended up getting <laughs> the mixed grilled meat because I really couldn't uh, decide. Uh, I really couldn't decide uh, what to eat. But I wanted to show you my two pals. This is a Mel on the left and Giuseppe on the right. These are Sicilian catfish. And the only reason I'm taking this picture is because I once knew a guy in Lawrence where I grew up, Esther. And this is a true story. Yeah. And uh, he used to loan out money, all right? And in his office, <laughs> and I swear to God, he had two piranha. So if people didn't pay, that's a good way. Right? But anyways, we have these two fish over here. This is a good joint. And it's our first night in Agrigento. I'm here picking up Alfred's sandwich because we ate well last night. So <laughs> we're having sandwiches today. And I want to show you a little bit of what they have. They have the salami, sasiccia, parmigiano. Grana, pa e parmigiano. Raggiano. Grana, padana. Grana. E formaggio tipico oh. siciliano. Caccio cavallo stagionato. Caccio cavallo. Caccio cavallo Caccio is cavallo. a very, very strong tasting cheese here. And then we have the provolone, also very strong yeah. taste. Oh, spaghetti del Etna. See, it's all over the place. Per fare pasta. To make the pasta. pasta. Then we have biscotti. Biscotti siciliani. Sì. Siciliani. E altra cosa siciliano? Questo uh. provola, eh, provola. Dolce, morbida. Morbida. Questa invece provola normale. That one's smoked and that one's natural or regular. <laughs> e poi questa... Questa è già stagionata. E poi questa... Questo... All artichokes. So there you go, and there's some olives over there. Looks good, huh? What do you guys think? I'm gonna get some for my salad. Grazie, saluta a tutti. Look at that. No, I think I want. No, I think we have enough of this stuff. I love this. Get rid of this? Get rid of that. Get two of those. Of course, we're gonna chronicle a little bit more of our restaurant experiences because food, of course, is such a great part of the Sicilian experience and it's so different here than it is by us in the Catania province. That restaurant was so good two nights ago, you're not going to believe this, that I went to a supermarket yesterday <laughs> and I bought myself some cold meats to make a sandwich. And that's all I want to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> My comments were sufficient during the Good show. Good morning, Esther. So we pulled into town. Good morning. And we're staying at a very funky hotel uh, in Agrigento, kind of like off the beaten path, but we really no, like it. it. Tell actually, us about it's it. it's on the main beaten path. It's not far from the port, about three kilometers from the ruins, the Valley dei Tempi. In fact, driving over here, wow. I kept going, wow, wow, look at that, look at that. Beautiful little area walking distance not only from the port but some of the restaurants and that's it. Uh, what is this place unusual for and before she answers that question we're staying right there on the first floor uh, right to the right above the tree you have a little deck over there very comfortable place what's this hotel no known for? It even has a little museum these two brothers um, are unbelievable they're very passionate about preserving history and one of the brothers started buying ancient Greek artifacts from all over the world. Why? Because up until the, I think, 1950s or 60s? 60s. 1960s. You could come to Sicily and just go to all these ruins, these historical ruins, and take artifacts with you. So one of the brothers, once they were outlawed, started looking around the world for these artifacts and started buying them back and take so a look. So this is Fabrizio. Hi. And he, believe it or not, started looking all over the internet for these pieces that were taken out of Sicily. And why did you do that? Um, I do for my passion in uh, archaeology. 
Um, from the 1939, um, there is a, a, in Italy there is a very restricted law for business of archaeological records, but before uh, the um, uh, business of uh, this kind of items was uh, free. So um, uh, every traveler came in uh, Italy uh, for, uh, for the Grand Tour or for uh, his holiday um, could uh, come back at uh, his home with, uh, with some special souvenir with the original pieces. And these in, were from all over the world you found? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Or mostly Europe? Um, but mostly from Europe because uh, um, the tourism we had uh, in the last centuries was um, mostly from, uh, from Europe, but also from other parts of the world. In the same way, mm -hmm. um, many pieces uh, rest um, in uh, private homes uh, or in uh, uh, owned shops. And um, the project uh, we have with the collection Lagaipa is to buy back uh, um, some of these uh, archaeological records and uh, offer it uh, for um, study and, uh, and exposition. Could you Yeah, this see... is a dice. Could... Look at that. Yes. Could you see the different yeah. little points? So they so... were using dice back in the ancient times. Yes, yes. To play, play games. To play games. Uh, do you remember the Caesar, Caesar says, uh, il dado tratto, das dice in bone. It's uh, very interesting because the, the golden rule, uh, here there is more light, the golden rule for the dice must be that the uh, opposite uh, faces uh, must have seven. So five and two, six and one, four and three. Instead, this is wrong, because this is five in this way, and four in the other side, mm. and six, and one, but there is some uh, error. So, uh, it's uh, make it rare. Very okay. rare. It's this is really cool. Believe it or not, these are for shaving. The men use these to shave. Huh? This is uh, this is a razor blade. Razor blade. It's not bronze. This is iron because iron is good to make uh, to cut. So, and in the um, uh, Romans and Greeks um, are, um, are um, they like to shaved. be clean they shaved. To be shaved. They like to be clean in, shaved. Uh, instead, the barbarians. No, not, has, not so uh, much. The classic people. Uh, uh, was shaped, so no, it's, it's, a, it's a phallus. <laughs> and, but it's, it's for good luck. But it, it was good luck, and ancient people uh, used this for good luck, and uh, they put this on the neck of the babies for good luck. And another. And then let's go another outside. Another interesting thing is this. This is the outside, by the way. This is uh, interesting Ooh. too. Here's another. <laughs> yes, this is interesting. Allora, uh, this is uh, from uh, Byzantino period. Uh, the, the, um, the period is uh, the 1000 uh, after Christ, not before. Uh, but it's very interesting because uh, this is named the Fuoco Greco, Greek fire. It's a bomb, it's uh, a hand bomb. And inside there was a mixture has the characteristic doesn't uh, uh, turn off uh, using the water. It's the fire. If you put the water, goes rise up. Oh, it blows up. Yes, it blows yeah, up. So blows this up. is a weapon. And and yes, it it's was, a grenade. Yes, yes, it's a grenade. And it, it, it was uh, very dangerous because it, 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 it was very hard to turn, turn off the fire. It, to it, put out the fire, yes, yeah. Like, like, uh, uh, like a Molotov. They burn... Ancient Molotov. Uh, yes, an ancient Molotov. And, uh, in, and it was very dangerous for the bolts. And then the Navy, and the Navy battles, they launch it with... Yes, they can, but the, the period the most important was in the Byzantine age. Byzantine. <gasps> Look at the statue of Athena. It's bronze. Bronze, beautiful. Qual anno questa? Qual anno? This is 480 before Christ. 
So the, the lekitos is actually the form of the base. And this, uh, this lekitos was made by the Hymon painter. In the world there are 117 pieces like this, including this. And you have one of them? Yes. Another one is the kind of decoration. In the ancient time, artists tried to be so uh, more realistic as possible. Instead, uh, uh, this painter um, tried to offer the idea of the imagine, like the impressionist of uh, So what is he doing? Is this a bull? So this is a bull, this is the head mm -hmm. of the bull, it's a tauromachia, it's a killing the bull. And you then can see here, woman. this yeah. this is a menade, this is, um, uh, this is a woman, wow. and uh, you can understand immediately uh, was this but you must to uh, imagine imagine, imagine. <laughs> of course. and this is the uh, the characteristic of this kind of artist i want to say this is an incredible collection and Thank bravo you. to bringing these pieces back to sicily another treasure here in agrigento and this hotel we definitely recommend to you guys Grazie mille. Thank you. Thank you very much. The hotel is Costa Zura in San Leone, right outside the city of Agrigento. In fact, as you drive over here, you can see some of the ruins. So it's a great, great location. Also walking distance, as I said, from the restaurants, from the port, uh, and really a great location. But this hotel is very cool. This museum is was quite a surprise, to be quite honest with you. You know, Wester, this is a very clean, comfortable, hospitable hotel in my opinion the two brothers are just great the wait staff here is good there and is no swimming restaurant. pool and I was thinking about it I was saying why isn't there any swimming pool and the reason is because the beach is about I don't know 600 yards away within walking distance practically from here so you really don't need to have that but they have a great spa Yes, sir, are you going to put the uh, hotel link uh, for the people to take a look yeah, at it? it'll be in the description Perfect. notes. Perfect. You know, I have to say that all the provinces in Sicily have some type of treasures, but really in this province in particular, not just the Valley of the Temples and not just the city of Agrigento, but there are so many little hidden gems in this little province. Of course, we went to Palma Montechiara, did an episode there, Canicati, we're going to have one on Porto and Podecle, and so many other little towns splattered all over this province. The province, of, Ag the province well. of Agrigento is um, way underrated. I mean, not the Valley of the Temples, that's way rated, but the essence of Sicilian life, beach life especially, are all these beautiful little communities around here. In the summertime, it's always warm always warm. Now you guys may be wondering why we're wearing <laughs> these jackets and it's we're filming this in the beginning of March. It's been unseasonably cold right. of course now under the sun I'm feeling <laughs> a little hot but at night it's still a little bit cold so as always we bring layers especially during this time of the year. I have uh, one cautionary note for you. If you're coming from Catania you have to go down the A19 and then you pick up the highway from Caltanissetta. Right. Yeah, there's construction going on if you guys are oh coming. Oh my God, <laughs> construction. I almost Big threw detour. out my shoulder and my clutch <laughs> leg. I bet you I shifted 300 times well, just in a 20 through that mile little stretch. town of Caltanissetta that you had to go through. Yeah. Which was interesting. Once, once you clear Caltanissetta, it's pretty clear sailing all the way to Agrigento. It's a beautiful highway. They've done a lot of work. A lot of work. There's the last actually four a years. lot of construction going on all over yep. Sicily that that's, just started in the past few months, actually. That's thanks to the European Union and the Italian government who started this program called the Super Bonus, which granted money kind of like a rehabilitation for the economy in the building trades and the infrastructure trades. And I'm telling you right now, profoundly impressed the way this country not only got up off the ground because of the COVID, not only got up off the ground over the volcano, not only got <laughs> up over, I mean, now we have, we have a, an impending uh, war in Ukraine, but Sicilians are profoundly resourceful well, throughout people. Throughout history, they have been yep. survivors, fighters, and persistently moving forward. So Every that's a day that thing. goes by, Bunsta, I'm more and more proud that I'm hooked up as a Sicilian. 
And I'm proud to be with you and to be able to share Sicily Seriously. with you guys. We really, really, really appreciate you spending this little time with us. And we'll see you on another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And make sure you hit the like, share it with a friend, and what else, Al? Savannah Diga. And peace be with you. Okay, peace. say a prayer tonight for all the souls that are suffering right now in Ukraine. Okay, grazie mille. Ciao. Ciao.